I'm Mandy Moore, choreographer of La La Land. We are gonna be doing a choreography scene breakdown for another day of sun. Probably the most difficult thing I ever did in my entire career. First girl gets out of the car and it was really important choreographically that she looked like she wasn't really dancing. One of the hardest things as we went through the process of choreographing La La Land was figuring out the bridge from normal people just doing everyday things, everyday gestures, and how does that then move to dance? This little arms up moment is something that Damien was very clear about. He literally wanted this shape from the beginning, I remember showing him this shape actually in a meeting. I said, oh, she wants to have her arms up like she's stretching. You know, to me this becomes a really iconic shape because it's one of the first things you actually really see her do. Okay, so she does a little sassy step back. There's a little ball change, a grapevine. Now here comes the spin. Yes! Okay, there was actually a little cut hidden in there. So I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not, maybe that's secret sauce, but we knew that we needed to create movement that would inform an edit. That's how we were able to kind of inform the whip of the camera was the spins. Something that was choreographed and something that was from the choreography department actually informed what the camera was gonna do. This first girl that came out and this second guy that came out, really important because he ended up helping this girl up who was a stunt person. She was only hired so that she could do this back flip off this car and land on the cement. I knew I needed somebody that A, could hit that, you know, 40, 60 times in a row, but also could land in a space that was probably no bigger than this screen, honestly. So here comes the flip. We're gonna do a little dippy dip dip. Camera's gonna push through and flip. As we're doing this, I'm still yelling out things like, okay, I can see you guys, or like, Mike, make sure you get up on the thing. So I'm like over here with Damien and Linus, our a cinematographer, and we are in the kind of like flatbed truck that's like this, you've got the jib on it, and that jib arm is like this right now, right? So it's shooting like this. Going along with the idea of that we're introducing more and more people, you know, we now have this woman who's in a red dress, which is starting to feel a little different than like an everyday normal thing. We have our first girl right there, she's the first one, I thought it was really important to make sure that she's always in the shot. But if you also notice, no one on this side is out yet, and that was a very conscious choice. You know, there had to be a build, right? These people right here, I'm gonna call that a happy accident. Because I basically saw the shot, everything's shooting basically chest level, and I realized that this whole area felt really dead to me. You know, I had this beautiful girl here, I had a lot of foreground elements. I basically was like, okay, guys, just get up and I need for you to do these kind of arm movements that you're gonna see in just a moment. And it actually ended up being a really kind of nice moment because it felt like things were building behind these people as opposed to just being in the foreground. And someday as I sing the song, this small town kid will come along. We're moving into what I guess I would consider our biggest section so far. As we were planning this thing, we had a lot of conversations about how were dancers gonna hear? You know, like, how does this guy hear the same music that this guy hears? We had speakers in these hidden places near car tires or just places where we wouldn't be able to see them in the shot and we would feed all the music through all of the speakers. So every person that's in here is hearing the same beat. You know, there's no delay. If this person, had, as we went far away, was off time, he's still far on the shot. I have to see what he's doing and he has to be on time with everybody else. Basically, our world stopped about right here. So all of this is fancy, fun post. I'm still building on the idea of finding those bridge moments. How do we now start to move into dance? So you're gonna start seeing what I'll call windmill turns. You're gonna see some people down this aisle and the people down this aisle start doing more choreography. At the same time, I created a second track of movement that was for all the people that were on the hoods and they do, I'm gonna call it an arm rainbow. Okay, so this girl right here, Jillian, my assistant, is gonna do something called a soda basque. And it's basically a turn in the air. So if you imagine like an ice skater, you know, they're, they're kind of traveling and then they do basically like a tornado move and then they land. That's what a soda basque is. Oh, there she is. 
So again, more of those arm movements that are happening, more of the arms. I've only had 30 dancers in this, so I've pretty much used all my 30 dancers. 104 degrees. This band had basically sat in that truck from the top of the shot for probably a good 45 to 50 seconds. On the day, the door broke. So we had a full stop down trying to figure out how to get the door fixed. And then as soon as they did, the spring came out and so it ended up being a really heavy door. So we actually had Mike plus these like three crew guys on the back side of the, the truck and then we would just yell, go, and they would lift up the door at the time that Mike had to do it. Damien wanted these kinds of like different dance genres to be represented in this particular part. He thought a great way to show that would be this kind of impromptu dance circle. You know, we have our flamenco lady, and then we've got our crumper. Damien really loved the idea of flamenco, and he loved that the woman felt a little bit older maybe, that she wasn't as young as some of the other people, and that she was doing something that felt very sensual and beautiful to her, and then putting that right next to a crumper who it's all about aggression. He does these cool hat tricks and then she kind of interrupts him and says, oh, I've got cool moves and I do a flip. Okay, and then again, there is a cut that's hidden in this whip. Now we're going into our third and final phrase of movement. I want you to notice that this is a one shot and we've got a stunt guy coming in on a certain beat. That's Damien's sister, by the way. Another stunt guy in a BMX following him through. He goes up the hood, a parkour guy comes in Again, still one shot, we've not cut. This is all one shot. Flips off the car, finds our conductor girl, our steady cam operators getting onto a crane, and then we go for the final epic dance move. The choreography and the stunts had to live completely together in this. The stunt guys were with the dancers in all the rehearsals. So I was creating the stunts and the dance kind of together. In this particular shot, I'm under the car because I had to count in Cameron, our skateboarder. Cameron has to land on a specific beat. So I basically would count down, and Cameron doesn't really count like dancers. As dancers, you know, we count to eight. Skateboarders don't count to eight. But I'm counting Cameron down, five, four, three, two, one, jump. We were also counting in our steady cam operator, Ari. So Ari would go off of Cameron's counts. Another little happy accident that happened here. We probably shot, I think it was like 47 takes or something. On this particular shot, we got this beautiful little lens flare on her. And then we got Danny. So he's heading to this red car right here, which we had to make sure that we reinforced. We definitely broke a windshield a couple times on that car because he had to throw up onto it. This guy, our parkour guy, I have ultimate respect for because this man was flipping and jumping through cars and he has a very difficult job because he's coming through here. Now notice choreography wise, I still have things happening, right? You've got people moving, these arms up, post-production help. And he's gonna come through here and he's basically gonna find himself up on this car. The camera is following him in and then has to flip on itself and walk back. He does this flip, wow, every time. Everyone's gathering up, you see our conductor. Another happy accident. In this particular magic moment, everything worked. We got this lens flare, we got the little wind in the dress, little Marilyn Monroe kind of moment. I mean, I wish when we all watched it back, it was the people were like, oh, you know, it was like so cool. All right, so now we're going to our big final dance scene. The only time they're ever dancing in unison. That was a very specific note and a thought from Damien. Let's remember our post friends. So our world ended right there, right behind that truck. I'm right here under that car. So all of this is post-production, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so we, um, you know, were able to make it look like, you know, hundreds of dancers were back there. So we had this way of labeling all of the cars so that we could discuss how we were going to talk about how to reinforce the hoods. Because if you notice, dancers are on like every other hood. And also, if I had everybody on hoods, then I felt like it was kind of weird that I didn't also have people on the floor here. So we used this labeling system. Each lane was a letter, and then each car was a number. So that then we can then discuss, okay, D11, that's Patrick. He dances on a roof, so it has to be reinforced. We know he's in a white car, 
So he shouldn't wear white. So he's going to be in something that's in a green or brown color. You know, so, so many departments you're dealing with. So you're dealing with casting, transpo, an art department, transpo and how you're getting the cars. You're dealing with wardrobe. And then I also had to make sure that choreographically I'm getting Patrick back to his car because he started in his car. <laughs> so it would be weird if Patrick just got in a different car and started driving out. To dance on a hood that's only, what? four feet wide. It was really interesting to find movement that you could do on a hood. Because your dance space, you know, basically if someone's standing, it's like your stance is going to be basically what you can do. So if you notice, a lot of the dance moves that they do all kind of replace on themselves. So this final dance section is funny enough, the very first thing I made up for La La Land, which is odd because we didn't shoot it to almost last. I love this moment when they have their feet together. Like how many times have you s stood out in the sun and closed your eyes and just like felt the sun on your face? You know, I wanted to create these moments that felt really joyful. So then we go into Damien's one request. They all need to jump off, they all need to get in cars, and they all need to turn and sing towards the camera, and everyone has to shut their doors at the same time. At the end of this entire thing, because mind you, this has been one shot, you know, from the kid on the skateboard to the BMXer to the dancers getting up to the flipper to the conductor to everyone dancing in the cars. This has been one shot and everyone had to make it important to themselves and they had to make sure that it, that it happened, that they just got in the cars and that they, they closed the door at the same time. You know, I definitely threatened them with their lives slightly, but, um, you know, I'm so, so proud of these dancers. That's the choreography scene breakdown for Another Day of Sun. So when you're stuck in traffic, you know what you need to do. Get out and dance. It's